Hello, this is Rocket Man Dan, and today we're going to be capturing an asteroid. So first things first, let's pop into the tracking station to see if we can't find one. Here we are in the tracking station. So I want you to get your cursor out and go on over to this question mark icon above the top there. Tap on that and it'll show some asteroids we've got. There's an asteroid just here. It's a size class C, which is a medium asteroid. And to show its encounter with Kerbin, I want you to double tap square. There we go. And now if we zoom in on Kerbin and click X, we can see what path it's going to take. And if you see, it's going to be coming in here and leaving around here. So it'll be coming in in the usual way that we orbit, which is good. And it's just past the Moon's sphere influence there, if you see. So we roughly know how much Delta V we're going to need to get to it. So I can launch my ship and get it into a similar orbit whilst we're waiting for it to meet us. Okay, well I'll get my ship into orbit and then we'll discuss what we need to do from there. Okay. Now we've got our ship in orbit, we can have a little look around. Now, the most important thing when you want to capture an asteroid is you want to have this little piece on top just here, the advanced grabbing unit. And that allows us to grab on to the, uh, to the asteroid, because obviously it won't have a docking port. See there, it opens up nicely. And that's the main thing you need. Now I'm going to be doing some asteroid mining as well, so I've attached a couple of drills, an ore tank, some thermal radiators, a converter just there that converts the asteroid rock into fuel, and a probe core because I plan on detaching it once I arrive there. Now you can build yours any which way you like, but I did kind of like the idea of this. So now what I want you to do is go back into the tracking station and in the tracking station I want you to just go up to the top here and click on this little asteroid looking tab there we go and on the left hand panel we're going to select the asteroid and we can see that it's going to reach us in 39 days so we want to fast forward till it's just in the sphere of influence of Kerbin There we go, it's just entered Kerbin's sphere of influence. So we're going to go back to our vessel now. There we go. Just place that prograde. Now, from here on out, you're basically going to treat it just like docking. So if you haven't learned how to dock yet, I suggest you go back to my episode on docking, which is episode number nine, I think. But if you have, Let's just go into the map screen. I want to zoom out and get a look at that asteroid. There it is, just inside Kerbin's sphere of influence. So we're going to set that as target, which you can do by pressing X and set as target. Now, first things first, when you want to rendezvous, you want to correct your inclination. I've got an inclination of 9.7 degrees. So I'll do that and then I'll walk you through the next step. There we go, that inclination's all set now. And now if we look at the path of the asteroid, it's going to swing round and come round there. And its periapsis is just going to be about in line with the moon's sphere of influence. But I don't want to meet at the periapsis because that's where I want to slow the asteroid down to capture it. So I'm going to plan my manoeuvre somewhere about here. I'm just going to give it a nice touch of prograde. So I can meet it over there somewhere. I'm just trying to get it on matching paths with the asteroid. And now we're going to use the skip orbit feature. 
And if you look over there, you can see the lines are gradually getting closer over multiple, multiple orbits that we're going to have, have to time warp to get somewhere close. And you see every now and again, the moon gets in the way. We can always just correct that. But it should be pretty much fine. So that's somewhere about close. And we're going to try and sort out this um, intersection here. Now it's 1,320 kilometers away. I'm sure we can do a lot better than that just by maneuvering things around just a little bit. There we go, the best I can manage is 43 kilometers. I'm just going to lock on over to maneuver. And now that maneuvers in 10 days and five hours. So you probably best going into the tracking station to fast forward this. And if you're on console, you must remember how long that burn says. So that's one minute, 48 seconds. So back into the tracking station. There we go. A little tip when you're wanting to fast forward to a maneuver. You can go onto the ship you're currently flying and it'll show you that maneuver. And it's a little bit tricky trying to find out exactly when that is. So using your L1 or R1 buttons, you can look directly at the maneuver there. And you just want to tap square over it. And that'll tell you that's in 10 days and five hours. So we can just fast forward on through this. There we go, with five minutes to go, we can pop back to our vessel now. Okay, so we're going to lock on over to that maneuver. Now if we remember right, it was one minute 48 seconds. So that's 54 seconds before the burn. For these last few meters a second we're just going to get rid of that maneuver and go into the map screen see what this has to say so at the minute it's a 465 kilometer difference so we're just going to see what a little bit of pro grade can do that affects it dramatically so we're going to turn this engine way on down tap square over the engine I'm just going to hold in R1, plus triangle, go on down and move this thrust limiter all the way down to about one. Perfect. Okay, we're going to close that. Let's just have another little look at that encounter. We'll try and get as close as we can for now. Hundred and nine kilometers away at the moment, but we'll soon sort that out. So what we're going to do is just fast forward. That says it's in three days and one hour. So we want to fast forward. That's two days. Still on the two-day mark. Three days exactly. Okay. Let's um, start fast forwarding this. Oh, turns out we can't. We've got to do it like this. We always start off the time warps, because if not, things have a way of going awry. Let's fast forward to here. 
can see the asteroid catching up with us. We'll have a relative velocity of 405 meters per second. And what I want to do is I want to burn retrograde to my target after I've turned my engine up, obviously. Go all the way back up. And just here, let's have a see. That's in one hour, 17 minutes. I'd like to get a little bit closer first. 44 minutes, let's do that. And just here, I'm going to start burning, killing off some of this velocity. But I'm not going to burn directly retrograde. I'm going to try and push the retrograde marker on top of that anti-target marker. trying to push that retrograde marker on top of the anti-target. A little bit goes a long way here. I'm going to burn directly retrograde now. Now it says we've lost our encounter altogether, but that's not true. That's just a mess up there, so we're just going to burn off a little bit of velocity. And it comes back. So I'm going to fast forward till we're a little bit closer. There we go, five minutes away. But that won't last for long because we're going to go big burn retrograde in a moment after we've tried to line up again. There we go, 0 0.2 kilometers away. We want to face fully retrograde. I'm going to fast forward till it's about a minute away from the en encounter. There we go. And now I'm just going to give it a big retrograde burn. If we look at the top of our nav ball, we can see our velocity to target. I'm just going to fast forward again. I've cut thrust just till we're about a minute away again. There we go. I'm just going to burn retrograde to target after I've leveled up again. Just pushing that retrograde marker inside the anti-target marker. I'm going to go fully retrograde again. Kill off nice chunk of our velocity. Now we're only going 24 meters a second relative to the target. There we go, relative speed 4 meters per second and that's in ooh, 18 minutes. Let's see if we can see anything in fact. Oh, there's the target just there, 5.1 kilometres away. So uh, let's speed things up a little bit, shall we? There we go, you can see that retrograde marker just creeping outside of the line there. So what we want to do is just keep adjusting, keep levelling things up. I'm just going to try and push it 
into the anti-target again. There we go. And now I'm going to go into docking mode. There we go. And I'm going to face my target and open that claw just there. Just going to turn on the RCS. Just try and move things about just a little bit. And if you do want to fast forward, remember you'll have to make a few adjustments. There we see it look creeping up on us. We're not too far away now at all. Just going to kill that time warp. That thing is level up again. Obviously I've got way too much mono propellant, but it doesn't hurt to have too much and it might come in handy. Try and kill off a bit of that velocity. Try and get down to about a metre a second for now. Line it up nice. There we go. We should already be targeted the center of mass, but I believe if we tap square just over the asteroid, probably when we're a little bit closer, we can target the center of mass. And there we see it. Just level up just a touch. Doesn't have to be perfect. Turns out, no, you can't target the center of mass until you've actually connected to it. Let's um, aim some cameras, shall we? Perfect. Coming up nice and slow, just one meter per second. See if we can get a different angle. Sometimes it has a habit of bouncing off these asteroids. So about a meter a second you should be fine. There we go, fully connected to the asteroid. Now what I want to do is go back into staging mode there we go. And you'll find that our thrust to weight has dramatically decreased. So I want to zoom out, now connected to the asteroid, and at our periapsis, I want to plan a manoeuvre to bring this in. But this isn't a very good orbit because we keep hitting the path of the moon. So I want to bring that right down so there's no chance of the moon hitting us. There we go. 6 million, that seems about fine. And that estimates a 1 minute 25 second burn. So want to face to the manoeuvre. Now obviously you'll be feeling a little bit sluggish because you've got this extra weight and now if you do tap square over the asteroid you can find out its mass which is 90 tonnes and 93% of that is resources we can use for mining fuel with. And if you do find things are moving a little bit sluggishly, you can always just turn on your RCS just to help with that. So we're going to fast forward on up to that manoeuvre now. There we go. We'll start about now and see how we go. Beautiful. I think that'll do just lovely. Just right. Now, I want to plan a manoeuvre now at the periapsis just to bring this in just a little bit. There we go, that's perfect. I'm going to face our manoeuvre, turn our RCS on even. Things might be helped out a little bit. 
definitely a lot faster doing it with your RCS on. I've got a few of those Werner engines on there. Let's uh, walk on round for these manoeuvre. There we go. Turn that RCS off. Now we definitely haven't got much fuel left. So why don't we mine a bit, shall we? Open that fuel tab. And now I've got these actions set, well a few of these actions set to some control groups. We've got the drills deploying there. We can turn those on. We can start that asteroid harvester. We can deploy these thermal panels and turn on the convertitron just there. Oh, it's a lovely shot of Kerbin and the Mun just there. And now if we fast forward a little bit, we should be able to see that fuel grill. There we go, we've got more than enough now. We can cut all those um, functions off. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Thanks very much for watching. If you'd like to like, share, subscribe, maybe leave me a comment, that would be great. See you next time. Bye-bye.